Hello guys and girls, Raj here, back with another video. In this video, we are going to go over five cloud questions that you almost always face in interviews. And you probably think you gave a great answer, uh, but that's not always the case. So we're gonna go over one bad answer for each of these, and then uh, what the good answer should be. And all these questions are applicable for both AWS, Azure, and GCP. Uh, but since I work for AWS, and I know AWS better than these two clouds, uh, so I am gonna use AWS terms. And as always, timestamps are below if you want to skip uh, to one specific questions. All right, without further ado, let's get started. So question one, how can you make your application scalable for a big traffic day? So one sub, Power answer is put the virtual machines in auto scaling group and use load balancer. Why is it a subpar or bad answer? Because it is very basic answer. Uh, if you answered this like five years back, it would be good. But now there are a lot of things beyond auto scaling group. Uh, for a huge traffic day, this alone won't be enough. Uh, so how does a good answer look like? So you should briefly touch on, hey, when you talk about scaling, there are two factors. One is the limit of scaling, as in uh, what is the peak traffic that your application has to accommodate. And second is the rate of scaling, like how fast traffic gonna increase. So then you should pre-warm your load balancer based on peak traffic or rate of traffic increase. Because if your traffic, let's say, increases from zero to 50,000 in couple seconds, load balancer is gonna take time to warm up. Uh, so your users will experience throttling. So you should always pre-warm them based on the rate of traffic increase. If you are running on EC2, use auto scaling group. However, make sure that the AMI used is lightweight and does not take long time to spin new instances. And then select EC2 family type based on workload. If your application is compute heavy or memory heavy, select the EC2 family type accordingly. And ideally, the application should have microservices architecture so that each microservice can scale up or down independently. And if you have microservices, you should use containers or serverless. Uh, for containers, you use requests, limits, horizontal pod autoscaler, cluster autoscaler, proportional autoscaler, cluster over, over provisioner for Kubernetes if needed. And then for serverless, use provision concurrency. And then you should also check limits on account. If your peak traffic concurrency requirement is beyond the account limit, you have to work with the cloud provider to raise the limits, re-architect the systems accordingly, etc. And also talk about database as well, because database is the critical component of the app. So uh, mention that, hey, we have to make sure that the database can handle loads. If you are using as SQL database, uh, use read replicas for read, query should be optimized, use caching where possible. With NoSQL, for example, Dynamo, use a DynamoDB Accelerator if applicable, uh, switch to on-demand mode based up rate of traffic, etc. And the last point is very, very AWS specific. So if you are in AWS, uh, run IEM. So this is infrastructure event management where uh, AWS runs load tests and make sure that everything is working smoothly. Uh, so you got the gist, right? So uh, dive deep, answer in such a way that the interviewer understands that you actually uh, have some experience and you thought about it, not just the basic uh, solutions architect associate uh, level answer that, hey, just use auto scaling group and load balancer. All right, second question. How can I run my website on cloud? Uh, so a subpar answer is deploy your web server and application server on virtual machine, for example, AWS EC2, and then use load balancer and auto scaling group. Uh, so why it is not good? Because it is pretty generic lift and shift, and there is missed opportunity on impressing the interviewer on like newer services and knowledge, and then if you just give this answer, expect lots of follow-up questions on scaling, cost, security, management, etc. So a good answer will be like this. Uh, there are multiple ways to achieve this depending on the project requirement. 
Uh, you can always use virtual machine if the team is new to cloud. However, using serverless or container is a modern way to run your website. And then you go ahead and explain one of the modern uh, technology. Like, let me explain how to achieve this using serverless. And then when you explain this, uh, mention advantages of serverless, like how it's serverless, you don't have to manage scaling, uh, it's already highly available, so uh, you don't have to create VMs in multiple availability zones, and how it is pay per use, uh, etc. And I have given a link for the serverless one, you can go study it uh, for how to do this in serverless. And another tip is, you can also explain this using container, or other modern methods like light cell, amplify, etc. are based on your knowledge. And keep in mind, if the interviewer specifically asks about lift and shift, then you can talk about uh, virtual machines. But if, the, but if the interviewer keeps it open-ended, there is a great chance for you to impress the interviewer with your knowledge. Okay, next question. Uh, what is the difference between SQL and NoSQL? So the most common answer I get in interview is, uh, SQL holds structured data and NoSQL holds unstructured data. Uh, you can define indexes and run queries on SQL. Uh, SQL is good for transactional system and NoSQL is best for logging. So why it is bad? It's a like very basic answer, right? Because your name says it that SQL is structured query language and NoSQL is a no structured query language, right? So. If you just say it is structured versus unstructured, it doesn't give much clarity. It doesn't highlight the strengths of modern NoSQL uh, and also modern NoSQL databases such as DynamoDB support indexes and it can be used in transactional systems as well. So a good answer, go over the basic properties. So you could mention that SQL uh, has a predefined schema and NoSQL doesn't have a predefined schema and explain what that means a little bit and then go over ACID versus CAP, uh, different scaling behavior, use cases, examples and then you can even look up case studies where companies are running both SQL and NoSQL in an effective manner. Uh, so there are a bunch of case studies you can just Google. And I also have made a separate video on these exact topics. Uh, so if you're interested, you can, you can look up uh, that video and then uh, check the points from there. So next question, this one is super important. How do you secure your application on cloud? So bad answer is use authorization and authentication to make sure proper people or application can access what they should be able to access. So why this is bad? So interviewer is asking about security mechanisms related to cloud, not the application processes. Like authentication and authorization, will, you have to implement it. Either you run your app on-prem or you run it on the cloud, right? There is nothing special about that. Uh, but the interviewer asking, how can you secure your application on the cloud? So these are some of the things that I personally mention and I expect uh, at least some of this uh, for my candidate to answer to me. Always mention there are two aspects of security of the data. One is the securing data at rest. So for that use KMS encryption to encrypt data at rest. And you can even mention that uh, for maximum flexibility use customer managed uh, CMK uh, to do this. So I have a separate video on what is AWS KMS what is client versus server-side encryption, etc. I'm gonna give a link to that and then you can check it out uh, if you want. And then you should also secure data in transit. Uh, use SSL. Uh, if there is requirement, traffic should not go via internet. Use VPC endpoints. Use client-side encryption while you encrypt uh, the data using KMS, using the uh, code itself. Uh, so not only the data is going over SSL, but the data also is encrypted. And also, uh, if the interviewer asks, okay, but how about the hybrid architecture where the data is getting transferred from data center to the cloud and you want to make sure it is secure. Uh, so talk about uh, VPN and direct connect, like VPN, the data is encrypted. However, it does go over public internet. 
uh, but direct connect uh, the data does not go over public internet so if you can do direct connect you should do direct connect and then and then talk about the utilize cloud firewalls for example security group uh, access control list etc and then uh, use cloud specific identity access controls such as IAM policies backed into IAM roles uh, for decrypt and encrypt data using KMS, IAM policies to make sure who has access to the service, etc. And use cloud security services. One example would be AWS Web Application Firewall uh, for DDoS protection, additional header check, etc. And mention that uh, authentication authorization should also be implemented, uh, but say that it is easy to integrate third-party identity provider with cloud services. Uh, for example, if you already have your user base in Okta or Auth0, uh, you can easily integrate that with uh, Load Balancer or API Gateway, etc. So the last question is, uh, probably this is the first question you get in the interviews, uh, what is cloud computing? So one super answer is cloud computing is storing your data and servers in data centers that you don't own. Uh, you can run your applications on cloud. Some cloud examples are AWS, Azure, GCP. So why this is bad? Because this doesn't highlight benefits. Uh, so when you go for like a cloud interview or a cloud job, remember cloud is still new. Uh, so chances are as a lead architect or lead developer or cloud developer, you have to talk to people inside the company who does not understand cloud. So you should be able to explain the concepts in an easy to understand and a crisp way. So what is a good answer? Good answer is cloud computing is the on-demand delivery of IT resources over the internet with pay as you go pricing instead of buying, owning, and maintaining physical data centers and servers, you can access technology services, such as computing power, storage, and databases on an as-needed basis from a cloud provider like AWS. And I gave you the link here, you can go uh, look up this definition and couple the advantages and stuff. You should memorize those stuff. That's what I did for my cloud interviews. I mean, these are very common questions, so you should not stumble on this. You should have like a really uh, crisp and impressive answers. All right, guys and girls, that is the video. If you found this video useful, uh, please do all the YouTube stuff. Uh, click like, subscribe, comment below. If you want me to do uh, more videos on more interview questions, let me know what other questions you want me to cover. And also uh, our channel just passed 5,000 subscribers. So huge thank you to you guys and girls. I read all your comments. I try to uh, reply to them. I get a lot of positive comments and that's the reason I do this. When you guys send me positive feedback telling that, hey Raj, uh, I found this video really helpful to my career and stuff. That really makes me happy. So anyway, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys and girls in the next video. Bye.